Diana, would you would you explain a bit about that song? Yeah. Uh, the, yes, of course. Uh, so. <laughs> It's no, it's right. The lights, the lights not working. Sorry, by the way. Right, no, okay. since since, like, oh, since we you were there? here, the studio has <laughs> fallen apart, and the, the the mics are on, but the lights okay. not not up. Don't so, worry, don't worry about that. Uh, so so don't cry. I think when people have heard it, they think it's kind of like a love song about a lost love or something. Um, but actually, uh, oh, about four years ago, I was gonna buy this car, and it was like a really good deal, and. Um, then basically they sold it like just before I went to see it and they sold it to someone else and I got really stroppy about it because I'd had all these like images in my head of like going up to Scotland and travelling around in this car and doing all these things and um, and I got really stroppy and I was just like well this, yeah, this is Rick so I wrote this song and then my other half who's listening hello Mark um, he uh, I just wrote the song and then he got his guitar and put some chords to, to it and, uh, and I wrote it in literally five minutes and it was just this sort of getting that anger out and realising that like, I never actually had the car. You know, I never had it, I wanted it, but in my head I'd already had it. And I think there's so many things in life like apply to that where you kind of get your hopes up for something and then you don't get it and then you get annoyed, but actually you never really had it. You, you, just in your head you did, it wasn't real. And I think, so yeah, so I think that song applies to lots of things, but it was a really good little anger outburst of a song, that one. And um, <laughs> I'm proud of that one. <laughs> yeah, so that's 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 that one. I'm go- I think we're just going to deal with the topics in different orders and see see how things fit. Because I wanted to ask you about YouTube mm. or b- doing stuff online. Yes. Because I know, okay, well, partly because it fits in with w- other topics that we talk about here. Because it just seems to me that radio is uh, coming to an end as FM, and it's gradually becoming bits of social media and things that are just put together online um so i just wonder if you were sort of aware of that as a trend or how you got into the idea of doing youtube or something like it um i think i like i've always stuck like songs up on youtube so i have a music youtube page which is anna marie wait if anyone wants to check it out um i probably haven't been massively active with it so we wanted to stick a few videos up and the songs um and then when i left radio the idea was that i got into youtubing and put everything on youtubing and i think for various reasons it just kind of hasn't happened yet (laughs) yet um but i think i think when i was in radio no, no one can see your face you know you can sit in here and you can talk and no one can see you and there's something really comforting about that and then to suddenly want to go onto youtube but it was sort of like you feel very exposed is there's a, you know you, you, i think yeah pe- there's so many people are following youtubers you know there's these youtubers out there getting like you know doing really well a, a small percentage of them um but i think yeah it's a really good platform to get your message out there um, but I personally just need to find the confidence to do it. And I think for me as well, like I stand for kind of community and recognising what's right in front of us. And so with YouTube, what the part of it that holds me back a little bit is that I'm here saying, right, we need to focus more on what's in front of us. Um, but then I'll be on YouTube going, hey, everyone, like look at what's in front of you when I'm actually encouraging them to be on YouTube watching me do you see my point and I think that's that I'm in this conflict whereas I but then I think that can I I can see that it does have a positive impact to get your messages out there because I'd love to talk about mindfulness and kind of emotional intelligence and all those kind of things and depression and link it into music and talk on YouTube about it but yeah at the moment just something is holding me back so is that specific to YouTube, the way it's sort of going, uh, the way it's perceived, or is is there other some other format that that might might work better? Well, you know, in person's always good. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> that works really well. It's really good when you're with other humans in a room because it's like really good for your well-being. <laughs> um, so, so that format is working yeah, pretty well for me at the moment. R- right, um, <laughs> right. Yeah, well, I can, well, I can agree with that <laughs> because it seems to me. Um, I mean, that might be the result of um, meditation and mindfulness yeah. and so forth, that it hasn't inspired you to concentrate on a, a focused approach to YouTube. It's sort of moved you off in other directions. Yeah. Which is quite all right. I th- do you know, I think you've got a good point there because I know, I mean, I got really into mindfulness, I don't know, it must be like four, four years ago, like six years ago and four years ago, I went on a course at the university, like a CBT mindfulness course. Um, and 
I think I have become slightly maybe less driven. I was used to be very driven and very career obsessed and music obsessed and everything was about that. You know, like, I mean, my partner, I'll tell you when we got together, I said, my music comes first, my career comes first, you know. <laughs> he certainly reminded me of that the other day and I was like, oh my God, did I actually say that? And I think, you know, whether it's sort of meeting him or the mindfulness or a combination of it all, I think I've settled and actually, I think you just realise what's important and actually family and friends and everything that's in front of you is really important. And I like the idea of just having like a, a balance. If you're, I, I don't know if I'm completely going off course here no, in what I'm saying, on. but I think before if you're when i was racing along and it was boom 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 i've got to get this done got to do this got to get that done you do, you do, i wasn't really enjoying anything because i was trying to get to the next point all the time where since i've slowed down you notice what's in front of you more and um you can actually experience life rather than trying to get to the next thing so i think that's mindfulness has slowed me down in that sense made me recognize what's important but equally i think my partner's played a, a, a part in that too <laughs> So what what do you think about mindfulness in work situations? Then? I think I think it's fantastic and I I really think from my own personal experience I think that yeah I don't, I I mean it's not for everybody and a lot of people will say mindfulness can be anything it can be going to the gym or going for a bike ride it's something that you're fully focused on but for me I see mindfulness as it's about self-awareness so in the workplace you know you can get it, there could be disagreements between staff um you know you can get like sleep in the afternoons or you might come in in a bad mood and it's being aware of actually how that's affecting other staff and i think by having mindfulness what they're doing is they're bringing self-awareness to people and i think particularly in a work environment when you've got loads of people and loads of different personalities that's where i think conflict and things like to happen i mean i have not worked in the workplace or that kind of environment for a long time and since I haven't, there's been less, less conflict in my life. So, because I'm not around so many people. Do you see my point? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Am I making but sense? Yeah, I'm not sure yeah, if I'm just yeah. waffling. All, all, all that all, all <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sort of observing is that um, mind, mindfulness is uh, now very... F- very much in in the news or people in talk fashion? about it a lot <laughs> and it's seen just as a positive for organizations yeah. um but what you're saying is that it might so it might have the consequence that everybody's very focused motivated fully aware of what the organization is trying to do and sorting out all the differences and getting on with it or it may have the effect people um, move away from their jobs and get involved in something else completely. Which is fantastic. This is the great thing because surely, as a company owner, you want your staff to be there. If you've got people that don't actually really want to be there, what's the point in having them there? They're not going to do a proper job, are they? So I think it's great for me. I mean, I see the positive in that. You know, I think if I, you know, when when you're working with people, you want them to actually really want to be there because then they're going to do a good job. If they don't really want to be there, I think everyone should have the opportunity to go off and do something that they enjoy. And actually by bringing self-awareness to people, yes, it's great for many reasons, but I think also, yeah, it's going to give them an awareness of actually what they want. You can tell I'm quite passionate about it. Sure, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, I I just think it's it's so positive and... um, I mean, I'm not sure how, how they exactly use it in the workplace, but I think it's just about being self-aware. And I think, you know, like, like I said about, I mean, I've, I've noticed recently when I've been going into town, a lot of people arguing, a lot of angry, it seems to me, I don't know if it, I'm just more aware of it now, but it seems to me that there's just more of it. When I go out, I just see couples arguing or, or someone on their phone shouting and I, and I feel like there's more like anger everywhere um, and I just think you know and I, I just think if we can bring more awareness to that we more aware of ourselves then it, it can only help really yeah and, and <laughs> I don't know if that's relevant but yeah, I just wanted no, to make that, that de- point de- de- definitely <laughs> relevant and it, and it sort of fits fits in with uh, compassion as an idea because mm. it seems to me that that's the, that's the other thing that might um, when this sort of the places where this stuff originates from, the the two the, those two ideas are, are related, but it I sometimes come across my mindfulness without the compassion bit as as it's presented. Um, yeah, I think I mean compassion. You talk about compassion, and there's a song I think we're going to play towards the end of the interview that I wrote about kindness. Um, 
And it was actually um, inspired by <laughs> me and my other half had had like a row over something. And then, and then he was beating himself up about it. I was beating myself about it. We were just beating ourselves up, you know, which makes you feel terrible. And then I wrote this song about kindness. And I think that is the most important thing is actually, yeah, if, if you are feeling angry or you yeah you are having that if then you go away and beat yourself up for it it just makes everything escalate um so so yeah like learning to be kind to yourself but i think it's really hard like i've been practicing to be kind to myself for like ever and i'm still horrible to myself sometimes <laughs> but generally i'm quite nice are you nice to yourself uh yeah sometimes <laughs> sometimes but it do you know and I think it take it takes uh, practice, and I think you know, like we were saying about my YouTube channel, which I haven't started. If I sort of start beating myself up about it and saying, "Oh, I haven't started it," oh my god! But actually, it's like I just kind of haven't got there yet. You know, it's like it's how I suppose that's how I'm looking at it. It's like, yeah, I said to my half this morning, I was like, "Oh, just maybe I'll get on YouTube eventually, or maybe I'll get the confidence, maybe I'll get there." And it will happen like whereas if I start having a go at myself that's going to make me less likely to do it yeah that, that all makes sense yeah that all makes sense is that what you're getting at with the compassion side of it or are you well I'm just asking questions yeah okay because I'm, I'm just wondering how, all, how how these things fit together yeah and what, uh, what people are actually talking about yeah and um, where the, you know where these ideas come from and how, yeah. they're, how they're put into practice and and uh, so I'm 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 d- I'm just I'm just quite aware that um, some some of the some of the some of the things you see on YouTube, um, it, I, I think it's quite it's quite it's quite well meant. Um, like um, Google, for example, have a have a, a very big meditation program, and they say it results in innovation. So the the, the people aren't stuck in a particular op- set of operations. They're, think, they're thinking outside of what the current situation is, um, but when you when you sort of see how it's presented on YouTube, they're they're sort of mad keen about the, the company, and they're not only coping with their job at the moment, they're imagining all kinds of innovations which just work, but chaboom, you know. Mm. Um, and this is all down to concentration, meditation, so forth. Um, so I, I just I just think things like. Uh, what the what the ethical basis of it all is, uh, it should be considered as well, because otherwise those those meditation techniques are just being taken out of a out of context. Possibly, I'm not getting at Google in particular. It's yeah. just that they've got some very sensational um, video video clips that are available. Yeah, I think um, I suppose it. It's a bit like, isn't it? It's sort of like meditate is becoming fashionable. So is that sort of what you're? It's almost like it's a bit well, like. I'm just, I'm just wondering what the basis of it being fashionable is, and, and yeah, what, and I so think what, it's, what sort of take you have on it? it I think. I mean, I was having a conversation with someone about this. That it's almost like something comes in, and then everyone hops on it, and it's like woo, and then it, the marketing then makes it big, and you know, it becomes a bit of a marketing project, and potentially a bit of a money maker as well I think there's all that's kind of intertwined into it as with anything you know like yoga became really fashionable and things become fashionable don't they and I do think that it is becoming fashionable but then I don't think that's really a bad thing because it's fantastic and, it, and I think it will always you like everything some people will use it in a positive way some people won't but you talk about the company saying that it's good for innovation and that sort of thing and I would say that it I mean, from my own personal experience, the more t- the more I'm mindfulness and the more I take time to myself to kind of just be with myself, the more creative I am. So, I mean, you know, I can really talk from my own personal experience of it. Yeah. So there's a, there's a, there, so I can I'm, see what I'm they're sure getting there, at. Yeah, there is a there is a basis to it. I'm just one, wondering what if you switch the context around yeah what 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 the consequence of that is i'm not sure i understand what ke- you're getting at your point is can you maybe repeat well, the question yeah i mean because i'm i'm starting from the i'm starting from the point of view of man- management theory yeah. let's say and the way the way that um, meditation techniques are taught within companies or mm. within work situations and what the organisations are trying to get out of it so we've already discussed 
some people will conclude they don't really want to be there they'd rather yeah. go home they've got something yeah. else to do and we've accepted that but I don't think I don't <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you know, it's not like I'm totally <laughs> for that, but uh, no, no, but I just don't think that's what the HR department no. were thinking of when no. they agreed the budget. No, 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 so. no, but you know, I, I mean, I, I was in a job once where um, they put me on all these courses that in it was a, a, in a sales job and they put me on all these courses and I learned all the self awareness and I left the job because I was like, <laughs> oh, I don't want to be here, you know, but right, like you say, that's right. probably not what they're. They're probably, well, maybe hope, it's an they're probably hoping for improved concentration, that the, sort of thing. Um, I just think, yeah, I just think it helps get the best out of everybody. Yeah, because some people will go and do something else. So maybe, yeah. maybe they just have to accept that. Yeah, but it's great because then you can make room for the people that really want to be there. Yeah, OK. Yeah. That's all right. That's what I think, anyway. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and anyway, you did leave Phonic and you've come back as a guest, so that's all right. That seems know. to be working at the moment. Can't keep me away. Should we have another bit of music? I don't, I don't know how the sequence is, but we'll, we'll play the music we got lined up. And then I think we've got another guest coming in. JT, could we have a, another track? Yeah, this one's called Today. <laughs> <laughs> 